everybody, it's me, Blanche. Now, if you're like me grocery shopping on a very regular basis, you're probably noticing that the prices are astronomical in the grocery store, especially for things like meat, lamb, fish, beef, whatever, even chicken. So when things get tough like this, I turn to my ancestors. My ancestors from the Middle East, they love their protein, but they made it stretch with things like grains. And I'm going to show you how to do this with a special Middle Eastern meatloaf recipe that will feed your whole family on a budget right here on Feast in the Middle East. Meatloaf was a very popular item to make during the Great Depression. Why? Because you were able to stretch meat using breadcrumbs. Well, in Middle Eastern cuisine, we don't use bread too much. We do use whole grains. So we're gonna use bulgur wheat. Now, bulgur wheat is great. We use it in items like kubba, which you could find on my channel, where we combine lamb with bulgur wheat to make these croquettes that you deep fry, or we also make casseroles with it. Well, you could use it in an American style meatloaf as well, and it works out great. And the cool thing is you don't even have to cook it. So what I'm going to do is put the bulgur wheat, I have a half a cup here, and I'm just going to add it to this bowl before I start cooking. And to it, I'm going to add 3 fourths cup of water that I just boiled, right? So I'm going to set this aside. By the time I assemble the rest of the meatloaf, this will be good to go and add to it. And I don't even need to cook it. Isn't that easy? So what we've got here is about a bunch of parsley that I washed really well and about like a handful of fresh mint. And together, these things add great flavor to my meatloaf. So I'm just going to chop it up real fine here. I personally like chopping stuff like this sometimes because it takes out my aggression. I don't think about anything except what I'm doing. And since it feels like we're heading towards a great depression, I want any kind of escape and my escape is cooking, right? Okay, so this is the consistency that you want, finely chopped. Of course, like I said, you could use a food processor much faster. Now I'm going to add to a bowl one egg the, the egg is important as a binding agent for all the ingredients of the meatloaf, so I would not skimp out on the egg. And I'm just going to whisk it. All right, and so to that, I'm going to add these herbs. This is both the mint and the parsley. Three cloves of minced garlic. So that's three cloves right here. Whisk it all together. I'm going to add one pound of lamb. Now, this is what makes this different, more Middle Eastern. We Middle Eastern people love lamb. You can use beef. I do find that the, uh, the, beef, the lamb is a little more juicy and tender. And now we're going to add all of the different spices. So we're going to add, this is one teaspoon of cumin spice right here. And I have one teaspoon of allspice. Now, because this is lamb, I do like a little sweetness to take away the gaminess. You know, they always pair lamb with like mint or something. This is pomegranate molasses. This is one tablespoon of pomegranate molasses. And finally, I'm going to add uh, two tablespoons of uh, Worcestershire sauce. So here's two tablespoons. A teaspoon of, or half a teaspoon of salt. And you can use either pepper, or lemon pepper. I do like lemon pepper with this, so combination of lemon and pepper. So we're just gonna add a dash of lemon pepper. All right, now this is where you, I really like to use gloves when handling meat like this. We are going to smoosh the ingredients together. The thing about meatloaf though, is that you don't want to over mix the meat because if you do that, it's gonna be tough. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's well incorporated. Another ingredient I added was here we have one small onion that I chopped finely and I put it in paper towel because I'm going to squeeze any excess moisture out of it. And you'd be amazed at how much moisture is released from onions. So I'm just gonna squeeze it into this bowl here. Look at all that onion juice. I don't want that in my meatloaf. If you like onion juice, drink it. But <laughs> otherwise you could throw it out. Um, and so what I'm going to do is add the onions to the meatloaf. And as you can see here, the bulgur wheat absorbed all of the liquid. And if it hasn't, you can, you know, take out any remaining liquid with a sieve, okay? So that's been 
sitting there absorbing all that liquid. And now finally, I'm just going to incorporate it all together like this. And that's pretty much it. It makes a great meatloaf that has a different flavor than what you might be accustomed to. Like I said, this has Middle Eastern grains instead of uh, just day old bread. And uh, it has a lot of really neat herbs and spices in there. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this, but back in the day in America in the 18th century or 19th century rather, they would eat meatloaf for breakfast. So before Kellogg's came on board and offered all those cereals, what they used to eat for breakfast was meatloaf. So this really kept them full for a very long time, I would imagine. So look at that. It's starting to look like a meatloaf already. So I'm going to get my bread pan and get my ketchup ready. Yes, I said ketchup. Okay, so some of you might think I'm crazy that I'm adding ketchup, but you can't have meatloaf without ketchup. We're, we're gonna keep it real. I mean, this is Middle Eastern style meatloaf, but I want the ketchup and I'm just gonna line the bottom with ketchup before adding the meat, okay? And I, I like to use organic ketchup or if you like low sugar ketchup, which is nice, they have low sugar varieties in the market, you can use low sugar ketchup. So I'm going to take this hunk of meatloaf and I'm going to put it in here and just make sure that I spread it around evenly. And as you can see, the ketchup's gonna rise around to the side, which is totally fine. And once you flip it out of the oven, because of the ketchup on the bottom, it comes out quite easily. And I like to even add more ketchup on top because that's what comfort food is all about. You always need some kind of like starch or meat and ketchup. <laughs> and I'm gonna cook it with the foil for 30 minutes. So at 350 degrees. So after the 30 minutes, I'm going to remove the foil and cook it for another 15 minutes at 375 degrees. So let's put it in the oven right now at 350 degrees, and then I will show you what it's like as soon as it's cooked. Because I am impatient, I already cooked one in advance. I'm gonna show you right here. You can see the cross section. Now the thing about meatloaf is it's not like extraordinarily pretty, but it tastes delicious and it's total comfort food. Serve this with some mashed potatoes and some veggies and you're good to go. Some people even put meatloaf in a sandwich with like mayonnaise and onions, but that's totally up to you. So I'm just gonna slice, and this is great in my kids' lunches. This is not like your conventional meatloaf because it has Middle Eastern flavors. It's almost like a kibbeh, like a kibbeh casserole. So I'm just going to put this on a plate here, like that. And I'm gonna give it a try. And trust me, the ketchup is really what makes this. I love ketchup with, with this. I Don't ask me why. Maybe it's kind of like reminiscent of a burger. So. Mmm. This is absolutely delicious. I love the texture that the bulgur adds to it. And like I said, this is a great way to make meat stretch. So, you know, if you're buying meat for like $9 a pound, but you have four people to feed, you add some bulgur wheat and all of a sudden it could feed everybody and maybe even have some room for seconds. And that's the whole reason why I'm starting to cook a lot more like this because it's saving me bucks and I'm able to feed more for less. So if you want more cuisine that saves you money, like, you know, budget kind of meals, let me know in the comment below. Check out my cookbook at feastinthemiddleeast.com. Limited edition, hardback, over 200 pages. And until next time, enjoy, and I'll be back with more recipes really soon.